Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is about TensorFlow 2.0. First of all, let's discuss about what you will be able to do after completing this tutorial. So guys, as you can see on the screen, you will be able to code a deep neural network with help of Keras and TensorFlow and optimize based on mean square errors. As you can see on the screen, these are the iterations going on and you are optimizing your models to find out the best fit on top of your base data. After that, we will test our model for the out of back samples. Please watch the video till the end so that you will have complete idea about modeling, training and testing deep neural network with help of Keras and TensorFlow. There is a small tutorial of Google Colabs in between. If you are already familiar with Google Colab, you can skip that tutorial. So without waiting, let's start. First of all, what is a deep neural network? So as we all know that in our traditional type of mathematics, we used to have one equation y is equal to mx plus c. This is the simple line equation. We feed us some values of x and this equation used to give us the values of y. So this is the way these equation used to work. But now with help of neural networks, if the data is given to you, like you got the values of y and x, you have to find out the values of m and c. This is the basic concept behind deep neural networks. So instead of this y is equal to mx plus c, you may have some sigmoid, ReLU, all other type of functions. You will have all these data points given, your y value and your features like x values. And you have to find out the relation between x and y. This is the logic behind all deep neural networks. Now how a deep neural network works? So you will have all these inputs, as I told earlier, these x values, and you will have your output. Now all these neurons in between will have their coefficients, those m and c's. Now with the help of these inputs feeding to this neural network, you have to find out the values of these constants. Okay, so this is the basic introduction of deep neural networks. I have already created an in-depth explanation of how deep neural network works, what are feed forward networks and how the back propagation happens. And I have given the link in the description. So you can check out those videos. But since we are utilizing Keras and TensorFlow, you do not have to worry about all of that. So that let's jump into our Google Colab and start coding. So since you guys are pretty much new to Keras and Google Colabs, so I will just show you how to open a Google Colab notebook in your system. So you have to just type Google Colab. Okay, and you will get this Colab research.google.com. Click over here. So you may need to log into your local account or your Gmail account over here so that you can utilize all these free access like zero configuration required free access to GPU and easy sharing. So all these things can be done over here. Okay. So you have to go to just file and click on new notebook. Okay. So this will open up a complete notebook and this notebook is as same as the Jupyter notebook what we use to work in our local systems and all your files will be saved to your Google Drive. Okay. First of all, we are going to import all the libraries like TensorFlow and all and you do not have to worry about installing the libraries over here because all those libraries are already installed on these Google Colabs. So let's give a notebook name over here. So our notebook is now ready. Let's import some of the libraries like NumPy and pandas. Now import the tensorflow. So these are the basic libraries I'm going to import over here. And you can click on this run command or press shift plus enter. All these libraries will be imported. I will generate some of the values with this equation y is equal to mx plus c. Then I will train my neural network. After that, we will test our neural network that if it is able to find out the relation between y and x or not. So this is like a testing up a neural network with help of the relation we already know. Okay. First of all, if I want to generate some data set, I can use NumPy arrange to utilize NumPy arrange to generate some numbers between one and hundred. So as you can see that I have generated an array of 100 numbers. Okay. Now I want to generate some equation like y is equal to mx plus c. And let's save this numpy arrange into some variable like x. 
so i will just do y is equal to mx plus c and here i'm going to give this m as an value 10 and c as an value 100 okay let's see so let's check our y and this is our x So as you can see that I have these values x and y for x1 y value is 110 for x2 y value is 120. Now I will train my neural network with help of Keras to find out these relations this mx plus c. So first of all you need to define your model okay. So I am going to define a model is equal to tf.keras.sequential. Now inside that you can see that it automatically gives you all the details like you have to define layers sorry you have to define layers so you can define all your layers inside a uh, list tf dot keras dot layers also you have to define that which type of layer you want to put over here you can put up a dense layer so dense is a fully connected okay so inside this dense layer you need to provide the units and the input shape okay so we have simple input so you have only 1d array over here you can see and since you are utilizing only 1d array so i'm giving only unit 1 over here okay so let's run this and see that if our model is working okay you can check out the object so this is the tensorflow python keras engine sequential okay this is your model type so let's add some layers so you have to just write model dot add so i'm just going to copy all these things and put it inside this one so you can give your neurons over here how much neurons you want to keep in your second layer and your third layer i have to add one more bracket now it's done so this layer is added now let add one more layer now model dot compile and inside that you have to give your optimizer like rms prop you can give or you can give adam then you have to give the loss function that can be your mean square errors and in case of classification it will be log likelihood so let's put up an optimizer and I am going to put uh, Adam then you have to define the loss function so loss you want to put mean square errors since this is a regression type of problem so once you have compiled your model now it's time to train your model okay so let's train it so you have to give model so this is the same way we used to give uh, in sklearn libraries model dot fit then you have to give your x values that I have already defined. Then you have to give your y values. And you want to give your epochs. So epochs are the number of iteration you want to give for training up your gradient descent or any other optimizer. So I'm going to put up a large values over here, like 10,000. Okay, 10,000 may take some longer time. So give around 1,000 and then run this one it is started running and you can see that what is your mean square error and it is reducing line by line as you are moving down okay and still going on now the mean square error has reduced to very low value like 2000 something it has to reach to very low value because you don't want a huge error in your equation it's still running uh, so these errors are not reducing after reaching to like 1358 so what I am trying what I will do to make equation converge pretty fast I will increase the number of samples I am going to give okay so let's stop this model over here so let's run these from the start so I am going to give 10,000 values okay in that way our mean square error will reduce very fastly because you are giving higher number of samples to your equation 
again define your model then add all these layers since we have already given huge number of values i do not have to go thousand iterations so i'm only going to give 100 iteration now let's run this so you can see that the error has reduced to very low values in very so error has reduced to like 1000 in around 38 iteration only let's see that if we get very low errors so it has reduced to 700 now it's in three digits so at the last you got 4.83 this is still a pretty good type of uh, number now let's test uh, our model how much near we reach to our equation so if i give uh, some value over here x if i put up the equation over here and i will give instead of x i will give uh, 10000 oh sorry i will give 100 so let's see what value i am getting so it is 1100 if i am using the equation now let's check our model how much it gives so i will just write model model dot predict now you have to give the value you want to give 100 so you can see that it has reached 10 1098.19 this is very near to 1100 guys so you can see that your model is able to find out all those equation with help of the sample you have given so this is the power of deep learning guys so, so guys this is the basic lecture of uh, tensorflow and it's made for beginners so i'm going to make the advanced topics like image processing and all in coming lectures if you are first time coming to my channel do not forget to press the bell icon and subscribe button because i used to come up with new videos every single week regarding deep neural networks data visualization and machine learning so with that i will say you goodbye for this one and meet you in the next lecture